We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Hey, 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 everybody. All right, there I am, right over there. How y'all doing? Happy Sunday. Yeah. Welcome to Gospel Rhythms. I am Trisha Man Grant. And listen, I know my partner in crime, my girl, my, my homie, the, my soror, my sister, she is not here, Miss Ro Williams. You guys will pray for her because she's a little sick today. She's not feeling good. Boo. But you know, she said, girl, please, it's Man Talk Edition anyway. So this is the Man Talk Edition. As you see, all of these men, these are men sitting around me and they have so much to say so I'm going to take the back seat from time to time I do have a few questions that women sent me different women of different walks of life that have questions for you guys because you know you know how women do we have some things we need to know too but I'm actually here as an advocate for the guys now let me say this and Evan Lionel will be here very soon by the way because this is focused on him I truly truly believe in co-parenting peacefully. I have two children, as I've said on shows in the past, two separate dads for these kids, and that is not the way that I plan my life, but sometimes things just happen in a different way. However, I have always been co-parenting peacefully in spite of it. And uh, it's not always easy, but I never believed in tearing them down. And I can tell you this, we are not here to bash women, but we are here to get a story told, okay? So for all the ladies out there, knock that chip off your shoulder. Sis, it's not about you today, it's about the guys. It's about the guys and their story, their history, their situations, their pain. And uh, even with one of the children that I have, I just recently had a, a conversation with their dad about all the pain that I've had throughout the years because my desire was for him to be a good dad. And then I look around this table at all these men <laughs> that want to be good dads. And the thing is, they do exist. And there is a plethora of them out there that really want to see their kids, take care of their children, uh, do the right thing. But unfortunately, they've been faced with uh, spiteful actions because the mom doesn't want them to see the kids because she can't have her way or whatever the situations are we'll find out very soon from all these guys here right now to my very far left over here is my husband mr anthony tony grant welcome thank you for coming to the thank show thank you so much I'm so <laughs> glad to be on gospel <laughs> rhythms dot com that's right 2015 all right. right 2015 we also have keith belcher hey keith you can say hi to everybody hello everyone thank you very much for having me here today Yes, yes. And we have Wendell Patterson. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't forget about Dr. Charles Agege. I said that right, didn't I? Yeah, absolutely. Come on, Dr. Well, thank you very much. And, uh, <laughs> I'm very, very happy to be here. Yes. All right. And we've got Wendell Patterson to the left. I mean, to the right. My other right. My other left. Yes. Thank you guys <laughs> for having me. It's blessed to be here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah. you. And hey, Vince, I want you to share that, that mic with Jeff. Yeah. This well, is well, Vince well, Walker. Yeah. There, you there you go. Vince Walker over here, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> He's How from you? Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Chi-town in the house. Chi-town. We got <laughs> another Chi-town brother, Mr. Jeff Arnold, comedian extraordinaire. Good, e- <laughs> good evening and good afternoon to everyone. Okay. Thank you for having me. Yes, yes. All right, guys. So, so you know what? I, I've already made my disclaimer to the ladies to let them know this isn't about tearing you all down, but I really want you to be receptive to what's going on. Who wants to jump in first and tell their experience um, and how they really want to see their children and spend time? We got any volunteers? Do I need to pick somebody? Yeah? Jeff? Well, um, my son is 18 now, so th- the dilemma and the drama is over. So, you know, I got him to manhood, and now he needs to decide the blueprint that I laid out for him if he wants to follow it. So that's on him now. Mm -hmm. So I did my part as dad, and I'm going to continue to do my part as his father. But what I went through was, you know, excruciating. But I also had an advantage, though, because I filed for divorce. And a lot of times 
men are respondents in the in divorce filings. Hmm. So that's where they lose their battle at. Because as it was explained to me through a, a female DA, it's like 99% out of the time, the court is going to award the child to the mother because the mother is the natural nurturer. And the child has a bond with the mother more than the dad. So me being in the court, I learned a lot. So I knew how to, the first thing I su suggest to any brother going through it, you have to have your ducks lined up in a row. Hmm. You have to have everything. You have to document everything. I mean, even if you think it's minor, minute, you have to document everything. Because the court, sometimes in, when it comes to black men especially, it's unfair and it's unbalanced. Right. So it's already when you walk in there, the odds are already against you. Mm -hmm. So you have to come prepared. And a lot of us don't because we don't know how to prepare for that. We just feel that we need to show up and our presence is enough. Mm -hmm. You know, but the females, they already have the advantage. So. Well, does, uh, go ahead. Yeah, I was about to say, Dr. Yeah, Charles, um, does that ring true yeah, to you? Yeah. Let me just jump in on that. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think it's true that... Um, being a mom, you have an advantage, you know, over the uh, the dad in terms of uh, uh, custody. Um, the law in this state is gender uh, gender neutral. It, it much it really depends on how the relationship started. Let's say you you both married. I just need oh, to be a little closer wait, so wait, we can hear you. <laughs> okay. There we go. You hear me now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> if you both married, the thing to do is that if you wanted to separate, you know, from your spouse, you want to make sure that. Uh, you document everything that you did for the child when you were both married. You know, all the love, the TLC, you know, the extracurricular, the preschools, you know, the uh, play dates and all that. You want to make sure that everything is documented before you separate. And it doesn't really follow that if you are a respondent, you're automatically on the, on, the, uh, on the wrong side of the fence. Uh, I represent both, you know, um, fathers and mothers over the years and okay. uh, it, it really really depends on the facts of the case i don't think there's one general rule that once you're a dad you know you're going to wind up on the, on the short end of the stick but you want to make sure the court wants to know that you were there for the child in other words there's been situations where the dads are gone all the moms are gone and then all of a sudden they want to you know they want to take part in the child's life and they, and they want a big chunk of the child's life in that situation, the court is going to say, hey, you're going to take baby steps. You're going to have to crawl before you walk. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and so that you can now, exactly. you know, bond with the child. And exactly. then when you bond with the child to the point where the child now knows, yeah, that is my daddy, then before you know, you're going to have, you know, 50-50 custody. So my advice on this point here, right mm -hmm. on this point, is that no, don't think that because you are the dad that, you know, you know you're, not, you're not going to have a, a significant share of your child's life. You just want to make sure that you have the facts. Everything is facts. In family law court, it's facts. It's not in windows. It's not, it's not uh, hyperbose. It's not, you know, it is facts. If the facts are in your favor, the court will rule in your favor. And, okay. I, and I agree. Let me step in there because I'm a prime example. Um, my daughter was in foster care. I, I, um, I'll give you a short background. I was with my daughter, mom, for two years before I, could, I had to, like, bounce. I stayed away for a year. I came back, found out my daughter was in foster care. I let them know I was in, in the area. I gave them my address, and they told me, I thought I was going to only have visitation rights, but they told me how, what I needed to do to get full custody of my daughter. And by doing that, I was assigned a caseworker and all that. I would go to my hourly visits, supervised. And at the end of this hourly visit, my daughter would show insecurities by playing with her hair and sucking her thumb. So I went to the caseworker and I said, is there any way that I can let my daughter know that she's going to see me next in, in between visits? Some way, somehow, and I, I, I truly believe it's, it's just an act of God. They talked about it. And they allowed me, which is very rare and uncalled for, they let me have the phone number of these, these people who had my daughter, they even let me know where she lived at. And I would call her in between our, our visits. And then when I did have that hourly visit with my daughter, it showed that the improvement. Um, so yes, you do have to have your ducks uh, in a row. Um, you gotta have an established um, uh, um, place of, of residency 
and of course if you know in a job and mm-hmm. yes to make a long story short uh, I had to I had to have this 20 year old female come to my crib and go shopping with me and I work hard for my money mm-hmm. and she tell me what I can buy and what I can't buy and I had to like swallow my my man's pride and allow this woman to dictate what I had to fit in my budget and mm-hmm. going through those those steps the courts allowed me awarded me full custody of my daughter and she was five years old mm-hmm. so yes um, there is ways that we men can have um, custody especially now because there's, there's too many cases where the mom falls short regardless of what the reason is for but they'll fall short so the next step is to bring the father into the picture Okay. And the key about swallowing your pride. Remember, is the child. Right. Well, at the, the end of the day, you're trying to, you know, it's the best bring, interest yeah, of the, the child. Yeah, the best interest of your yeah. child. So, right. yeah. so if you have to swallow your pride, or don't let your egos get across the way. Because at the end of the day, you want to be there for your children. Mm-hmm. You know, so whatever whatever it takes, you know, to climb that hurdle and put you in a situation where you can now co-parent. That's what you have to do. Well, exactly. I mean, I'm like oh, yeah. Richard. I was one of the rare that I was, you know, the same situation. I was awarded full custody and I was taking the court two three times Absolutely. a year for 11 straight years Absolutely, yeah I yeah. mean it was a constant yeah. battle yeah oh yeah sometimes oh, yeah. So it's not overnight it's not no. overnight you know you just have to you know f- you know go with the flow make sure that you abide by the orders do what you have to do take the steps that but are necessary to put you in a position to right but they to, don't you know, but, but what I'm trying to in my particular case the court doesn't abide by the rules because when you file as a petitioner, I filed, and I know how to read, and I understand. It's like you have 30 days to respond, or it, th- or it goes into default. Am I right? That's correct. Okay. It took her a year to respond, mm. and she still came aboard fighting. Well, hmm. was, it, was, it, was, was your, chil- your children was in foster care, right? No. See, that's why. It was you know what I mean? He was with me, th- but he was with me. But it's still though she exactly. violated restraining exactly. orders over and over, exactly. and then received no contempt at all. I was told if it had been me that took him out of the state because we got to the point where we needed a signature for this ch- our child to go out of the state of California, and she violated that several times, and, and there was yeah. no contempt at all. But if I would had done it, and it was told to me, if I had done it. And took my arrested. son to see his grandparents in Chicago. I would be arrested mm-hmm. for kidnapping. Uh, so it's not a fair it's not a fair eleven uh, playing field for us. And I would right. I would definitely agree with that. Every mm-hmm. case is different, and it's an emotional uh, connection with your child and the situation that you're in. Um, yes, the court system may not have a direct line to say we're going to treat every man some way, but when you walk into that child support office or you walk into that court, their eyes are on the 70 to 80 percent of those men that are not in their children's lives or not paying child support. So you are already looked upon negatively, and that's my personal experience, although I was there for both of my children. Mm -hmm. Uh, Child support was paid for both of my children, Uh, even to the point where I was out of a job, laid off, and my child support was still being paid. Mm. My child support was still being paid even though I was sleeping in a car. Mm. So it's it's all on everyone's personal experience when they walk into that office because mm-hmm. each case is going to manifest itself depending on how your communication is with that woman. And if she's not willing to cooperate with you, if it's that situation, ultimately, in my point of view, you're not going to win because... If the mother is the individual that has the child, the courts are going to lean towards that side. And when they say you have to have your ducks in a row, it's more than just ducks. It's I can read very well. I comprehend very well. I was at court on a religious basis when it came to dealing with child support, the increases, where am I living now, everything I had to do to have my son and daughter. But if she turned and felt that she could be upset because I was making additional money, she could go in and get that. If she said, you know what, you were supposed to meet me here at 3 o'clock, you're late, I'm calling the cops and you kidnapped your son. Hmm. When I got to the location, no matter traffic, whatever the situation may be, if she was in a bad mood that day, I had to deal with it. And ultimately, my son had to sit in the car and watch the police officers, have a conversation with his father, explain the situation, and then go about my business. But ultimately, the child has already been put through a traumatic situation. They don't know 
what their father has done. They don't know what their mother has done. They just know these are police officers having a conversation with my father. So now your child is looking upon you as what did my dad do to cause this? Exactly. Yeah, I didn't do anything. It was traffic on the 405. Exactly. So what I'm hearing is you all think that the system is just not fair when it comes to the men. It's a one-sided. Is I'm 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 just asking, just yeah, from yeah, what I'm hearing, yeah, this yeah, is pretty yeah, much what yeah, you're it, saying. It, it, it's it's basically eighty percent um, on the women's side. You know, I mean, it's a small percentage where um, the courts will um, defend the fathers, um, just like with child support. If if the money is owed to the mom. Um, if the if the dad and uh, can have established a certain rapport with the mom, she can she can say she can drop it, hmm. and they don't owe nothing. But it's when it, but when it's owed by the state, the state gonna come get their money. But the mom has the option to say to to the courts or the system, I mean, all right, no, forget it. He ain't you know he ain't got to pay. If, if if they have a relationship where the dad is like okay with the receipts and all that, showing that proof that he's paying. Where he's supposed to, she has the ability to, to tell the system, eh, don't have, don't pay that. All right. I would like to welcome, and for those of you that can't see Veneric, that is Veneric. He uh, is our engineer and also one of the co-founders of this radio station. And he also can relate to what the guys are going through. Dr. Charles, if you don't mind just scooting down a little bit, we're going to crunch up here. And all of us, come on, Wendell, I want you to come on back. Hi, Evan Line now. <laughs> Welcome, Shot Town. What's going on? Right scoot here. over for me so that when y'all can scoot on in there with we, the next events. We need Ernest Mack over here too. Ernest, he Ernest, Ernest, Ernest Mack. that's all right. We're gonna work so it out, y'all. Bring that other chair over, over here, right next to Jeff. Okay, Veneer, can everybody? Can, they, they, are they all being seen pretty side. good? Welcome, Ernest. Thank you for coming so much to Gospel Rhythms. I appreciate all you guys being here, and uh, it's important that your story is told, and we know that we're mainly focusing on what el is going through because he needs uh he needs help <laughs> dr yeah. charles is presently his counselor unfortunately dr charles cannot go to dr charles cannot go to the very next uh court date right and so he needs a counselor so i just need everybody out there watching to keep that in mind if you know of someone you can help this brother out he's already spent over fifty thousand dollars uh, in court fees yes. just trying to see his children now he here's what bothers me um, you all are saying that, that it really bothered me when you said that the police were out there and your son saw that yeah. how many people here can relate to that have all of us wow that's, wow. that's, that's I why had a shotgun uh, put to my head. head I had a shotgun put to my head because yeah. they thought I had kidnapped my son and I was just out with my son when I came back and I'm sure you called the mom and she said, was standing right there. But she didn't defend you. She tried to say, you know what? I didn't say he kidnapped him. I just was worried about our son. I didn't know where he was at. D let me interject. Let me let me interject real quick. Uh, it is the it's not the police's fault. It's not their fault. They explained it to me clearly when they came in my house on full felony alert. Eight officers, one of them had a shotgun, the rest had their uh, triggers cocked, ready to shoot and kill me, and I was just asleep. And my three-year-old was in her bed, which was across from mine. So had they started shooting up the stairs at me, they could have hit my child. The mother gave them the key to our house and let them in, knowing that I was asleep and knowing our baby was in the same room, sleep in her bed as well. So she not only endangered my life, she endangered the life of our child my baby could have been shot and killed and I honestly know that her objective was to to have a violent thing happen and a shootout happen because she snuck them in the house and knowing I'm sleep knowing I'm trained to fight she told them that told him he's a black belt he's traveled all over the country fighting gave them my record and my history they looked me up I'm, I'm also a registered gun owner she said he has guns everywhere she told the police that he has guns everywhere he's ready to shoot and kill if you grab him he's gonna attack he's trained to fight they came in believing that they were coming to get a killer 
It's a hostile situation. Not knowing anything. And then mm -hmm. once they came in, and I'd be glad to show anyone in the public, the police report or anyone here, the police report is public record. Feel free to get it. Lionel versus Lionel. You can go to the courthouse and get it. It's clear. The police report clearly states that I was totally cooperative. I had no idea why they were there. And it states that there was no evidence that showed she had been harmed in any way. All it states is victim says this victim says thus and so no pictures were taken no evidence just victim says so I said officers why would you arrest me and be ready to kill me on full felony alert based on what a woman says his exact words was blame OJ wow <laughs> That's, That's what he said to me. Blame OJ. Blame so OJ. Charles, did the laws change when OJ when the OJ verdict came down? Did the laws in family court change? You have to give him the microphone. I, I don't think the laws changed. The law has never changed. Um, it, like you said, you can't blame the police. Right. Um, the police is. Yeah. <laughs> you hear me now? Okay. The police. We just want to see. Yes. And you too. Yeah. Wonder. The police is acting on on it you know, that they received from, in this case, the, uh, the complainant. And they have to go in there in full force to try to defend themselves. Uh, domestic violence is a very, very hot topic, as you all know. It's a very, very hot topic. And um, the law has been very, very, they take it very, very hard in terms of, you know, domestic violence. Once there is a complaint of domestic violence, be, you know, from the mom or from the dad, that's also a complaint about domestic violence as well. Mm -hmm. It is one area of the law that is heavily prosecuted. Mm. But you can prevail if you are innocent, like Launer is from the last case that I did for him. It was so obvious from the facts that he was clearly innocent of the, you know, of the charges. But they were trumped up and you know, he was in court. And so most cases, people who are charged, especially black people, they don't have people to represent them. So if you don't have, you know, competent legal representation, you're going to lose. It's mm -hmm. that simple. The judge is not there to say, oh, well, uh, because you don't have counsel or because you're self-represented, then I'm going to bend over backward, you know, to help you. You have to have a competent legal representation. And if you do, truth doesn't hurt. The truth is the truth. Okay, what happens when they can't afford it? There are a lot of people out there that wish they could obtain legal uh, representation properly, but it costs money. And then what happens is, in your case, the judge actually was trying to coerce you into getting representation through the court, which mm -hmm. is not a good thing for the fathers, from what I understand. Please correct it, me if I'm wrong. It wouldn't it wouldn't have been a good thing for me because this particular court has shown themselves to be biased against okay. me. Whatever my ex-wife says, they take that to be the law, truth, and fact. And I have to constantly defend myself against that, even though I'm the innocent party there. Okay. Even though she's lying constantly, everything she says. We're speaking of a woman who I found out that she had identification in my name way before I married her she got it done when I first met her and I had no idea when I went into my home I found identification that she had had printed up and she was using her first name my first name and my last name oh wow Okay, authentic, so you had her face? Uh, her mm -hmm. face and everything. Authentic, okay. but listen to me, authentic DMV information. She went to the DMV and got it. I went to the DMV and reported it, and uh, believe it or not, because she has an attorney who is unethical, who, who, who does a lot of, uh, lot of uh, malicious things, he constantly attacks me with malicious intent. He called the investigators at the DMV office. They spoke to me and they said, oh, so you're a wife beater. So you're this, you're that. And I said, excuse me, officer. We were talking about a case of, of, of uh, uh, identity theft, and you are now accusing me of this. It is because he had spoken to her counsel, which, who is an officer of the court. So I spoke to his superior. They reprimanded him for saying all of those things to me. But I want you to understand that if you don't have proper representation, and the key word that Charles used was competent. I had three other lawyers before Charles. All they did was rob me. And I came to Charles and I said, sir, you are expensive. He said, well, you get what you pay for. <laughs> 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 and he <All> said, right, <laughs> Charles. <laughs> 
and Charles said, right, he man. said, let me tell you something. I am a graduate of Stanford. I know what I'm doing. Well, like and when he, <laughs> I'm, I'm imitating yeah, you. Him. Imitate That's what he said. <laughs> and when he came to court, it was an entirely different respect. Mm. I kid you not. The judge that was biased, her mm. entire attitude was different. Mm. Uh, the the court, the respect of the court was t entirely different. And he got all the charges dismissed, dismissed. based yes. on his knowledge yes. of the law. No favoritism. They didn't know him. He didn't know <laughs> them. The other lawyer tried to do that friend stuff. Hey, what club do you golf at? Well, mm. all that foolishness. Charles was like, I'm not here to talk to you. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? He was that's here good. to do what I hired him for and that's, and that's what you need that's another good point when you do hire competent representation every for the guys out there and even you guys here you know if you're still dealing with situations make sure that they're loyal to you and they're not trying to be friends with the uh, opponent's lawyer <laughs> because that's just a conflict networking. of interest right there right networking we have to say Jeff. yeah no uh, when i went through it the first thing that were killing me was the continuances it was you yeah. be in court two minutes and it's like you know can we get a continuance and I'm like really it's like we can't resolve this issue now hmm. and it just kept continuing and continuing right. until it's like you know you just get so taken aback by it so do like, you oh. think that they want that to happen do they want you guys to get tired and worn out and not show up next time it or yes. in, in my yes. case I needed continuances because they were constantly throwing legal terms and things at me like uh, like you at the last time we were at court mm -hmm. they tried to combine a bunch of different things which they did so that they can rule on stuff and then when I disagree with they can say it's already been ruled on that's past history so uh, the, the problem the problem is you if you don't know what's going on a continuance is good and it works in your behalf because when Charles came in we had to get a continuance so that he could properly prepare mm -hmm. uh, for what's going on and and I'm up against an, a, a corrupt attorney who literally is out to destroy my life. Mm, but it's hard. You can get the victory. We already one hundred percent. So yeah. uh, if you, if I didn't have Charles there, I'd probably yeah. be in jail right now. Oh, oh, foolishness. Yeah. So oh, foolishness. thank God you were there because, you know, God gave you favor and everything that you said helped him. But he was smart no. enough. You were smart enough, too, Absolutely. to not continue even after you left that day because they wanted to continue his case and have, right him, there. have him do Rep some things. And he said, sorry, uh, I judge. <laughs> she said, are you representing yourself? Now, as soon as they got Charles, they were so happy to get him out the court. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready to represent yourself? No, no. I'm not ready. I need a no. continuance. Right. Uh, I want to show you what happens. This is Ernest Mack right, right. here. Ernest is my friend and my brother just like a lot of y'all are i've been knowing ernest for 20 plus years ernest was in a situation just like this that caused him to have a heart attack mm -hmm. and it was because of what happened in court and i would imagine that it wouldn't have happened if he'd have had a gentleman like charles there representing him mm -hmm. ernest will you please tell them what happened ernest is a promoter a lot of y'all know him he's known well all over so big time well, promoter share your you know, story my, my situation is is a sim very similar, but it was a lot tougher because my ex-wife actually worked with the courts, so it made it a lot different because oh she was employed she, by the court. Well, she worked for the Department of Children's Services. Oh, so mm -hmm. this becomes a super problem because not only was she connected and knowing all the different things that she could do to cause malice against me, mm -hmm. she also was in bed with the sheriff department. Mm -hmm. So. In wow. our particular city we lived in, I told Evan, you know, there was one case to where it got so bad. I mean, I, I was hearing the gentleman over there talking earlier about how much time he spent in court. And believe me, they knew my name, first and last name <laughs> in court, because I was there every day. And I fought this for years and years and years and years. And finally, it, it got to a point to where, and I didn't have any representation, I was doing all this myself. Mm -hmm. It finally got to a point that they said, okay, well, what we're gonna do is you're gonna pick your daughter up at the police station. And so I, I tried to do that, she wouldn't show, she, and it was back and forth, back and forth. I had to go back to court again. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, just put the mic up a little bit so we can hear you better. So we Thanks. went. <clears throat> we went through all kinds of different ways of trying to get my kid, but every which way we tried never worked. 
So it just caused more and more time to be overlapsed. So uh, towards maybe my daughter was like four or five years old, it got to a point where they said, okay, what we'll do is you can share this day, this day, and that day, and you'll pick the kid up at the mother's house, but I'll have the sheriff department meet you there. So you call us, we'll meet you there. Wow. So this is a trip because not knowing, I knew she was connected, but didn't know she was that connected. <laughs> but I called the sheriff department. I said, hey, this is Mr. McIntyre. Uh, my address is blah, blah, blah. I'm supposed to report to you guys today to pick up my kid. I go to the house. There's, I'm supposed to wait at the park till they come, and then we go around the corner to the mm-hmm. house. They never show. I'm calling, calling, calling. The sheriff says, they, they're like, well, somebody's going to be out there. Somebody's going to be out there. Somebody. It's two hours and went by. So I'm like, all right, forget it. So mm-hmm. the following week, I do the same thing. I go through the same thing. They're not answering, just treating me real bad. So the third time that I went to the park and I called them, I said, from where the park was to where my home was, I could actually see my driveway. So I called them and I said, hey, you know, you guys are supposed to be, I need to talk to somebody. So they finally put I think the watch commander on the phone and I told him who I was. And he says, okay, I'm going to send a unit out there right now, Miss McTyre, just wait right there. So I'm thinking, oh, cool. They finally going to respond and I'm going to get my kid today for the first time. I'm happy. I'm like, this is cool. So I'm sitting there. And I see my wife starting to load the baby chair up and putting it in her car. So I'm like, oh, she about to leave. This ain't a good look. (laughs) So so I'm like, what do I do? But not thinking, from where I can see her, I pull my truck in front of the street where she couldn't get out. And I walked across the street and started talking to my neighbor. Now, keep in mind, I lived there seven years. So I knew all my neighbors. I knew Mm -hmm. everybody. So while I backed my car right there and walked across the street while he was watering the grass, he was like, hey, what's going on? You know, was talking to him. He goes, man, I know, you, you know you're going through this divorce thing. I said, yeah, man, I'm over here trying to get my daughter now. So we were talking for a minute. Next thing I know, there's six, seven police cars coming full blast down the street. And they're coming. So I'm like, they pull out guns, get on the ground. You know, and I'm Mm. thinking, oh, shoot, this is crazy. So my neighbor is, hey, 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 what are you guys doing? He's just here to get his kid. He's been right here talking. Shut up. Go in your house. Get out of here. (laughs) So, like, they, like, tripped on him, and they had me handcuffed. So I'm like, man, what is going on? So the guy was like, shut up. Get in the back of the car. I want to hear that. So next thing I know, I'm in jail. Did he read you your rights? <laughs> no, no, they I normally, they rights. normally <laughs> don't. They didn't read me my rights, now, so now they probably didn't read to his. What I went to jail for? I went to jail. She had a nanny who was probably seventy-eight years old, seventy-six years. She was in her seventies. Old Spanish lady spoke no English, but she was taking care of my daughter while my wife would go to work. Her charges on me was that I came into the house and I beat her up I beat the nanny up and I blocked her car in now I'm across the street with my neighbor the whole time I just got off the phone with the watch commander and I'm like are you serious I spent 46 days in the LA County jail 46 days man I'm telling you because you were lied on How many of you all have been lied on by the all of you here were lied on? Okay, all of us. Jeff, did you tell your story about uh, what they accused you of in court? Just flat out lies. The last time I went to court was it was just it was the most ridiculous because we had three judges. The first judge awarded me primary physical custody. The second judge came in. He reversed that order. And he said, you all have joint custody, but the child is to remain with the dad. The mom gets him the summer and holidays. Y'all pick a holiday. So and all that. But she wanted to move out of state. And I kept blocking that. I was going back to court, all of that and all that. So it just finally came down to the last one. And the third judge was so cool, God bless him, that he just got to the point where he just got tired of us being there. And her last final attempt was... 
she threw I mean when she threw everything at me the kitchen sink the washing machine everything and the last straw was that I was touching my child inappropriately oh my god and it was I'm just sitting there and I'm hot Mm -hmm. I'm ready to go off and the sheriff's got around me and the judge was so cool. I mean, he was just like, Mr. Arnold, I, you ready to take off? He's like, listen to me. He's like, because I have to listen to, you know, to you respond back to these allegations and accusations. He said, but, you know, just l- listen to me. And I was ready. And he said, I see you ready to just respond. And he was like, but my, my concern is the interest of your son. And I wasn't hearing that because I was just ready to just go in. And then the sheriff just put his hand on my shoulder and said, hey, listen to what he's saying to you. Listen. And then it took like two, three minutes, you know, for that heated passion you caught up in that moment for it to just sink in. And his words just calmed me down. And when he would just say, I'm just, my concern is the interest of your son. And I just bypassed all of that. And I just told him how he was progressing, how he was doing, how he was handling. And he just said, you know what? I'm closing this case. And there's no need for you to even come back here. It's like because I'm not changing anything. Right. And it's just like, yeah. and I was just so blessed. Yeah. And now, you know, and I feel for, you know, mm-hmm. my brother Evan, what he's going through. Mm-hmm. You know, um, my son is 18 now. Yeah. So and I throw my hands in the hair. You know, I'm yeah. like, you know, hey, dude, you, you know, he's a baby boy. So he's back with his mom. But you guys so. have a good relationship. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We, we have a great relationship. That's you know, important. And, that, and that's important, you know. Yeah. But his mother tried to destroy that yeah yeah and that's the key that women try to destroy that yeah you know when fu- when men want to step up and when they see that we want to step up and be a part of our children's life that constitutes the problem right there it's kind know? of a, a misery loves company type of thing in, in my opinion and this is not to say that every woman out there in a right. situation of a custody battle is vindictive right but it becomes very personal when the relationship doesn't work out and if you have a girlfriend or someone you may know going through that situation, it's it, it, this may not be the exact situation, but it makes me feel like a number of women need something to talk about as opposed to just communicating with the father to work out the situation. Um, that's why you're continuously back in court. That's why the meeting times may change. Mm-hmm. Uh, a number of things that will take place as opposed to realizing Let's take the personal emotion out of this. Mm-hmm. Realize what's best for the child. Realize that, hey, if you have something going on for the weekend and you can't make it, let me understand that. Or let's work something out where maybe someone in the family can be involved so that the child still walks away with a loving feeling as opposed to that negativity because the child will know as soon as that car pulls up and you two meet eyes if you look at each other still, there is a negative vibe in the area. Wow. And when the child walks into your car, he's going to feel my mom's negative feelings. He's going to bring that. He or she's going to bring that feeling over to your car. And now they're sitting in the back seat and you're saying, son or daughter, what's wrong? Hmm. Well, the problem is mom and dad can't get along, can't get along long enough to have a conversation with each other. Say, let's just stop this. And a lot of times, and that's not saying every woman and every man is on the, the right side of this. But a lot of times, especially in my case, it dealt with the mother being vindictive. Okay, guys, so like you said in the beginning, because that's such an important point, and I was actually going to ask you all, has it at least gotten in someone's case here today to the point where you can co-parent peacefully yeah, with the mother? Yeah. I mean, because I know some of you are not experiencing that, but please Tony, give me some Tony, hope. Tony, Tony, before <laughs> you go, let, let, let me say this. Uh, it will not get to that as easy as you think and the reason that it won't is because they're being enabled to do this my objective for doing the show and doing all the radio shows i do and having a petition online and reaching out to all these guys constantly is to wake up society that this is an epidemic they are enabling mothers to keep children from fathers so much so that it is it has become commonplace and it is not that the mother and I cannot get along if the judge actually did her job and was fair and said we're not going to play these games then she wouldn't be allowed to constantly lie and constantly make false allegations if she didn't have a corrupt attorney who constantly brings these false allegations as an officer of the court before the court then she wouldn't be allowed to do that my objective is to get legislature in place where when a woman lies like that or a man when anyone 
on lies like that that they uh, suffer the consequences you have people that say men have harmed them or they've touched their child inappropriately and they're or or me I'm violent and I'm I'm ready to kill everybody uh, this destroys lives yes it does and so they need to be held accountable for mm -hmm. that I would ask of uh, Congress that they either uh, imposed uh, jail sentences mm -hmm. for people who do this or that they impose fines that are so hefty and that 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 are uh, so that their wages get garnished so that they don't feel comfortable doing this but right now Trish women feel very comfortable lying on men because there is no consequences after Charles got me acquitted I said Charles can we even get uh, attorney's fees back because I'm, I'm going broke right. paying all of y'all about her lies right. he said there there's no statute that even backs that up that I could get the attorney's fees back for this woman that lied and you saw her leave the court still smirking still smiling and mm -hmm. still playing the game mm -hmm. and since then I've found that they have filed charges in another court the same false charges but it is because the people in authority are not doing anything to to uh, call them to task for the lies they tell and the lives they're destroying which more than anything is mm -hmm. our children and that is why I'm here today because mm -hmm. I love my three children and if you ever hear this broadcast my beautiful children know you have a father who adores you who loves you and who is always here for you and I want you to know I'm praying for you every day and I got a lot of prayer warriors praying for you every day and I want you to know you will be fine my babies and I love you dearly know that Yes, thank yeah. you, Evan. Thank you. Let me say something about the um, consequences. Um, there is uh, case law, you know, that if you've been wrongly accused of, uh, s you know, child sexual abuse, you know, uh, false sexual abuse, uh, you know, accusations clearly uh, would tilt the scale, in, you know, in your favor. So let's say you are in a custody battle, and you know, the um, the mom says, "Oh, you inappropriately touched your child," or whatever the case may be. And if it's proven to be false, that has a lot of consequences. So there are some consequences out there. Yeah, you know. there, there has yeah, to be no, no, a there, are, there are consequences. You cannot just make up the fact that, yeah. you know, in I that. Know, yeah, I know, but he, when she threw all of that, I mean, the, the judge that I had, he was so smart to just read through all of that. Well, uh, what you said, Rick. He was just like, you know what? I know where she's going with this, wow. and I don't even believe it. He's D like, and I'm not even here. I don't, you know, he just listened to it, and he mm -hmm. just said, you know what? when he told me to calm down and take a deep breath he said you know what M my concern is how your child is doing with you yes yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and he's like and that's what i want to hear if you want to respond to that i have to sit here and listen to it but that's not my concern my concern is how your child is doing and when i and when it registered with me and i told him he just said you know what cool the case is closed the son is to remain with the father the visitation is to remain the same um and we're not coming back here for anything else and yeah. that was the what end is, of it what are the consequences <laughs> I say that in the microphone and then listen guys because we haven't talked to Vince or my, Wendell so my I question is what are the consequences I mean you witness her for example in my case she lied and said uh, one of the lies she had me up for four counts one of them was I hacked into my son's school computer to uh, see his grades of all things and communicate with him on online that way first of all why would you fight to stop a father from seeing okay. his child grades that's, that's a good question and why would you fight to stop a good father from seeing uh, from speaking to his child I was not in a way dad I was their primary caretaker the mother was gone y'all that know me know that they were with me every day she decided she's gonna lie to the court to get them away from me uh, for child I believe it's for child support uh, reasons I don't know for sure but she lied to the court to get them away from me they were with me every day like I was their mom mm -hmm. do you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying I was taking them Definitely. to school feeding them doing everything teaching them to read write walk and talk I still Charles in those counts she lied and said even the principal told her that I hacked into the computers and Charles asked her he said you mean on you're telling me that the principal said this and she said yes with great confidence and arrogance Charles contacted the principal 
praise God, the principal showed up at the courthouse. <laughs> On behalf of you. S yes, saying that none of that happened, and he would have to be an expert to say that this man is hacking into com computers, not to mention it's a federal crime. Mm -hmm. But there were no consequences for the lies she told. And there was no There proof. were no consequences <laughs> for, for the, the lies that was told on Jeff, Ernest Mack, no consequences. What are mm -hmm. the consequences, Charles? Well, there are consequences uh, in the sense that um, if, had you been convicted mm -hmm. of those charges, okay, there is a presumption that anybody that has been convicted or has been now uh, proven to have perpetrated domestic violence, you know, uh, on on uh, another party, on either the spouse or one of the children, that that person is not uh, a fit, you know, custodian. You know, custody should not be awarded to that person. The grand scheme of um, your client's, you know, attorney is to ensure that you, when it comes to custody, you always at the short end of the stick. Yeah. So, have you had you been, you know, convicted of uh, violating restraining order, criminal, you know, restraining order, the way it is, that would have gone a long way in for that hindering your efforts to even come close to getting, you know, uh, uh, reasonable visitation with your children. Mm -hmm. So there are consequences. The consequences are that, you know, she lost. Okay? And another consequence is credibility. Now, remember that in family law court, there's no jury. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. The judge is the jury. And, you, you know, when the judge listens to the parties, the judge is assessing the credibility of the witnesses as, as they testify. And once you lose credibility in front of that judge, you're done. Hmm. You're done. Mm -hmm. So you want to when you know. So anytime you walk into a courtroom for the first time, make sure that you you know you speak the truth. You know, do not exaggerate. Do not engage in hyperboles. Do not try to to be slick because the judge is watching you. Mm -hmm. The judge is watching your demeanor. The judge is assessing your credibility as you speak. And once that credibility, once the judge believes that this is a good person, always telling the truth. That will go a long way, and it's gonna, you know, continue. So once you walk into that court, the judge says, "Okay, yeah, Mr. Lana is here. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the guy. I believe him." You know, mm -hmm. so you have to be careful. You know that you don't just walk in there and try to, you know, uh, engage in game, game championships and so on and so forth. The truth will never hurt. Mm -hmm. I keep saying that, mm -hmm. but but you do need legal mm -hmm. representation. Now, the only time that it doesn't hurt you is when both sides have no lawyers. So that the level, you know, that the playing field is level. But if one side has an attorney and you don't have an attorney, you are already disadvantaged. Yes. Because even though you may have the facts, you have to present those facts to the court. I was telling Evan, I said, hey, you already know what I'm going to say, right? I know the answer. I said, but do you, do you know what is evidence? Evidence is what comes from your mouth. I know the answer to the question, but I have to ask you the question and you have to answer it. It's only when you answer it that it becomes evidence. Okay? So I already know what he knows, but what I know is not evidence. It has to go in. Right. So when I ask Ivan, okay, well, um, was it true that on so so day, um, you know, you you were you you know you were at, you at the residence, you know, trying to get you know move your stuff? He said yes. Well, I already know the answer, but that yes is the evidence. So if you don't have a good lawyer, and the other side has a, a some lawyer. Mm -hmm. It really, really, you know, puts you in a, you know, a big disadvantage. Thank you, Charles. Now, listen, guys, we, we, you know, we're getting close to the end. Veneric is going to be kind and let us go over a little bit. So, because uh, we still haven't heard from even Tony and Vince. Vince, we, we, we were talking earlier, and you said something to me, and I quote, mm -hmm. you said, I want to spend time with my daughter and be an influence in her life. Now, can I just say it's fair to say that all you guys feel that way pretty yeah, much yeah. you sure. just wanted to spend time with your children enough to influence them and like you said Jeff you know you were instilling values and ethics and, and putting something into them and that's what you guys want to do but what the moms don't understand is they're taking that time away uh, from you so oh can okay, I just say this one hard, thing yeah. what I saw going through the years that I went through the process and constantly the constant fight and I look at you I see the pain and I see the pain in these brothers face you you have to understand it's like you see what while while a lot of men just like walk away hmm. and just say you know what I'd rather just walk away and not even deal with this no more mm -hmm. because it's like it's a non-ending factor and we feel sometimes our back is against the wall and we just you know we are sometimes we done with the fight yeah because the fight is already like over before we even walk in and when you constantly beat down you know because i know a lot of good brothers out there 
from Chicago, Los Angeles, all yeah. over, because I travel all over the world and I talk to them. Mm-hmm. And they just said, you know what? I'm like, yo, do you see your child? And they're like, you know what? I have to deal with her. And of course, wow. it's like, you know what? I'd rather not even do that. And the mothers don't, don't realize yeah. how they're affecting the kids through the vindictiveness. Let you me know? tell you what else it does, <laughs> Trish. It makes you physically ill. Mm-hmm. I was before this began I was a father taking excellent care of his children mm-hmm. and my children are in gifted schools they're gifted because I work so hard with them on their education from day one when this took place I was healthy and in shape y'all know y'all know me I, I believe in staying in shape mm-hmm. my blood pressure was 250 over 200 mm-hmm. I became a blood pressure patient behind this and I have to take blood pe- pressure medication uh, two uh, pills twice a day for blood pressure. My knees, when I went to court with Charles, my knees swell up so bad I couldn't, I could barely walk. This makes you physically ill. That's why a lot of men walk away. Ernest had a heart attack. I didn't even know he was going through it. And I was like, where's Ern? He was like, he had a heart attack. What? I didn't know it was because he was going through not seeing his child. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And Vince got diabetes. (laughs) He just developed it, what, in the last year or a couple years ago? It makes you physically ill. Right. And Put your mic up. Yeah, pretty much. I I was under constant stress. Um... I was living in the house, so you know we were there, and <clears throat> I stayed. I stayed in a relationship maybe four years past. Me it too. was over. Me it was too. over a long time ago, and you know, for my daughter's sake, because I knew once I left the house, I knew it was going to be this. I knew it was going to be, you know, she was going to manipulate her. She was going to, and as soon as I went on tour, as I was out there, my daughter called me and she said. Mom is passing out. She's tripping. It, it was Valentine's Day, and she called me trying to get back with me. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm good. I'm 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 fine. I'm moved on with my life. I just want to take care of my daughter. <laughs> so she went into she passing all out on the couch, and she going and she really and had my daughter calling me. I said, baby, hang up the phone. Call 911. I am in Philly. I, there's nothing I can do. So as the time progressed, you know, I I, I left. And I, I was, you know, I, I, I went on my own own way and I had to start over. And uh, my daughter was just like, you know, I, she seen me with somebody else. And she's like, I can't believe you did that to my mom. You know, after all my mom has done for you, why would you do that to her? What is your relationship with her now? And what do you want your relationship well, to be? Well, it's been about a year and a half and she hasn't spoken to me. I mean, I sent her emails. You know, try to call her. Um, actually, she reached out to my wife, and she reached out to my wife, calling herself, telling her about me. Yeah, he has kids, and he don't take care of them, and you know, he don't care about me. He walked away from us. He runs away from his responsibility, and you know, trying to encourage her to not want to be bothered with me. But you know, and it's like my wife told her, you need to talk to him. Let mm-hmm. me let me interject on that. That's called mental abuse. Mm-hmm. That's called child abuse right there. Uh, you you have me, a parent who was an excellent parent who hasn't seen his children. In four years, I've only seen them like 10 or 12 times, and I didn't see them all last year at all. Do you understand? I left my, ch- they were, I was taken away from them, ripped out of their lives. My son was eight. My son is 12 now. And when it had when I say it's child abuse I mean it because when I was allowed to speak to my children on the phone she was in the background having them act crazy Mm -hmm. so the man that they always respected and loved as their father they're now on the phone being disrespectful to him uh, saying things that they would never say if I was there with them and my son would say well you can come over here right now you you, you can come on why are you not coming over here right now then if that's the case you can come see us right now come see us right now son I can't come see you and I can't explain to you why you're too young see that's what I'm talking about he hung up on me a number of times not only did she have him my children hang up on me she had them hang up on my mother who's 78 years old so she's on the phone she's their grandmom trying to talk to hey babies who they loved 
and respected. Mm -hmm. She had them talk ill to my mother, 78, and hang up on her several times. And there are many people who witnessed this and said, what is going on that no one is doing anything about this? I brought this up in the court. The court wouldn't even allow me to continue with it. But at the time, I didn't have Charles. It was just me speaking. They, I should be able to have minors counsel. So should you. Minors counsel is uh, 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 a party who is neutral. Not on the mom's side, not on the father's side. They are, provi they, they are uh, just there for the kids. Isn't that mediation? They're, they're, they're for, huh? Isn't that mediation? Mediation? Uh, no, it's not. The, they're there for the kids. They are advocates for the kids. They listen to the kids. They hear the truth, and they're trained to get the truth from them because they know one parent will uh, uh, prejudice their mind against the other. So they're right. trained as professionals to get the truth and then bring it from a neutral perspective to the courtroom. Okay. I have asked over and over again for minors counsel, and you know what the judge's reason for not allowing my children's voice to be heard? she doesn't think it's necessary and my question to you Charles and I've asked you that how is that legal well when you say legal um, the judge has to make a de you know, the decision as to whether or not to appoint minors counsel you're right minors counsel uh, the job of minors counsel is to actually interview the children talk to the children hear what is going on sometimes minors counsel even go to you know to the uh, residences you know see what is actually happening uh, you know you know uh, uh, at the home you know and then bring that to be and come to the courtroom and tell the judge report to the judge what your observations are <laughs> well okay. the, I, I think in most cases what militates against the appointment of minors counsel is who's going to pay Who's going to mm. pay the fees for the minors council? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, the, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the parties would split the fees equally. Yeah. Right. You know, or sometimes the judge would, you know, uh, tap into the budget and let the court, you know, pay for it. So it, it just depends. It, it depends on how you present your, you know, your your case to the court. It's not necessarily over that once the judge denies it the first time, that the judge will deny it again. You can still continue to renew your application for minors council to the point that the judge now says, you know what. Maybe it is time to appoint minors counsel. Okay, let me jump in here real quick. Wendell, um, and, and all you guys especially, basically what I'm hearing is these kids are hearing negative things about their dad constantly. And because they're with the mom who's dogging them out, it's hard for them to have a positive image of you all. So is that something, the bad mouthing, obviously is something you all have endured. Uh, how can you relate to that, Wendell, real quickly, please? Oh, wow. Big time. Um, I've definitely been through the court system, like just uh, uh, everybody on the panel. Um, still currently dealing with something. My son is uh, still having a uh, issue right now he's 23 um he just told me the other day uh yeah we was having a little debate um regarding my current situation with my ex-wife my current ex-wife and uh he still lives in the home with the current ex-wife and i'm talking just talking to him about it that um, i don't think it's good because i don't want you to be in the middle of our you know of our stuff this is not his mom um it's just someone that i'm with basically Basically, uh, what has happened is um, uh, we were, um, you know, conversing about it, and um, all of a sudden, he just came out. He said, "Why'd you leave me?" Hmm. It kind of hit me, and I said, "Now pause for a second. It took me. Uh, it made me rewind all the way back to when he was two. That mother removed him from me just because she was, you know, had her whatever's mad at me." for whatever reason her parents helped her so for a long time I wasn't uh, in my son's life like I really wanted to be mm -hmm. um, so it was right now it's currently hurting me right now because I haven't been able to talk to him right now because he's uh, his mom's not talking to me about it let's say he was watching this show maybe not today but maybe sometime down the road in the future what do you want to say to him wow that I love him I, I would really like to uh, sit down and have a father-son talk so that we can rewind and so I can bring him up to date mm -hmm. with everything that on my side that he may not know as far as you know what me and his mom went through way back when um, 
that's you know that's the troubling thing i i hope that uh he'll be able to come out of that because right now it's like that's it's really uh he's he's really empty right now i'm going to definitely yeah. be praying for you okay Thank you. Definitely. Uh, Tony, yeah, of yeah. course. I, I'm going to Tony. But I'd love for all you guys to just, you know, back to back, give a sentence or two, if you could, to your children. They may not ever see it or they may see it. We don't know. But just in case they do, I want you to send a message to them and tell them how you feel. To my children and my stepchildren, um, they know how much I love them. And, and luckily enough, they're all of age now where they understand that, dad will always be here for you um to those women out there that may be in a situation like this all i can say to you is please take the time to take the personal side out of it and communicate with these fathers that are trying to be men we're on a panel full of black men that are actually trying to be good fathers and let's stop our children from thinking of us may they be black or biracial that all black men are what they see on television because we are not seen as positive, strong fathers in the light of the world. So if you can sit back and communicate with this man that wants to be in this child's lives, you can change history. Mm. To my children, you know I love you. My stepchildren, my blood children, daddy loves you and he always will. Okay. Like I tell my son, I just had a conversation with him the other day. I'm like, hey, dude, yo. There's nothing you can do for me but love me unconditionally. That's all you can do for me. But on the flip side of that coin, I could change your I could change your whole life and enhance it. And if you ain't ready for that, I'm good. I got you at 18. You know, constitutionally, I can stop. I can quit. But I'm not. You know, but if you want to be that baby boy with your mom right now, you got to feel it and go through it. You When you ready to step up and be a man, I'm right here. Chicago zone. <laughs> Shut down. And this is Vince right here. That's right. MGM. Yeah. I know. We got some stories <laughs> up in here. I know. Ernest, Ernest, what, you Ernest, what would you say to your children? Well, you know, for mine, my daughter is now uh, 20. But, you know, I, I didn't get a chance to spread my whole story. But on the other side, you know, these women brainwash these kids and for me I just had a grandbaby <laughs> so this is crazy because she has brainwashed my daughter and my daughter has seen what she have went through with me and now it's deeper than that because now I'm going through it with my daughter with the grandchild I haven't even seen my grandchild because my daughter's playing the same thing like her mother so after you get brainwashed from a baby and all these years, she's playing into the same thing. And I won't allow that. Okay. So my daughter is slick. She's the type of kid, like, as long as daddy's doing for me, I'm mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. But when daddy want to put the brakes or something that I don't think is right, then she goes into the same thing like her mother. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing with when the grandbaby was coming, she was like, uh, dad, I need this. I need that. I need that. My 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 wife now threw her baby shower, did all the things for her, and she called ungratefully like, well, my mom threw me a bigger baby shower and, you know, this and that, and I need to get this. I said, well, you know, the baby is coming. You, you're living in a one-bedroom apartment with your guy, and I went over there. Y'all got stuff everywhere. Why would you need a baby chair right now? Wait till he gets a little older. Now well, you don't have to store all that. Oh, she got mad, hung up on me. So I said, you know what? It's like I told my father. It, I feel hurt that, you know, a grandbaby is special. Yeah. And I feel like this is hurting me because I'm not able to see my grandkid. But on the flip side, you got to know when to let your kids go, too. If so what would you don't say? If step up to the plate, yeah. you have to say no. Because if you keep feeding into it, they're never going to get it. Yeah. They're never going to get okay. it. Okay. So what would you say to her, though? What if you, she was watching right now? Give her a message right now. What, what, whether it's hurt or pain or whatever, just tell her how you feel. Well, I, I'll say the same thing that I sent her a text when the baby was born. Congratulations on your baby. I love you. I'm here for you. But until you get it together and know what you have and respect, you'll be all good. Because she can have anything she wants. 
But I'm not going to just give it to her. She has to earn it. Okay. You know what I mean? I got you. And I have three kids. Mm -hmm. One in Cal State Northridge. Mm -hmm. My son, she was going to Long Beach State. So I've done my duty as a father. But the whole thing, the the point of what I'm trying to get to is this whole problem with the, the whole child support and all of that stuff. These women don't know the effect that it has on the kid mm-hmm. and we have to deal with that until the later ages because that's, that's right. what we gonna do what he's talking that's about right. real quick trish is the games that's being played that cause children to have a sense of entitlement and they play one parent against the other whatever happened to the time where we worked together and we told each other uh we're not gonna allow them to do that you're supposed to be telling your children you are not allowed to disrespect your father i don't care if we aren't together mm-hmm. you are not allowed to disrespect your mother i don't care if we aren't together which is what I tell children anytime what Ernest is experiencing is a lack of respect because of the the values that was instilled in his daughter by a vindictive mother through the eight through her formative years you all have experienced a lack of respect she she is now an adult Mm -hmm. thinking that he's an atm machine instead Mm -hmm. of a father and that has to stop (laughs) i think you all have experienced that if my daughter is listening well My son, I have a 23-year-old son. If he's listening, he needs to know that I am here for him. You know, he has to be a man. You know, he wants wants me to get, like he said, an ATM machine. He just wants me to send him the money and then he take care of it. No, part of being a man is being able to take care of yourself. My daughter needs to know that I love her. She needs to know that it is just as important to have a man in your life as it is to have a mom in your life. So she needs to be able to reach out to me. My son needs to know that I love him. I have a son, I have a 17 year old son in, in Atlanta. He needs to know that I love him and he needs to reach out to me. You know, I've reached out to him and I've opened that door. So if that's what they need to know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I've basically done the same. Um, I've reached out to my son, uh, told him I love him. I'm telling him I love him right now if he's watching or listening. Um, my daughter, I haven't mentioned my daughter, but my daughter's actually fine, but they, we didn't. I don't know. I, I don't know what it is. My daughter got removed from me uh, when she was almost two, and uh, the situation with that, with my daughter's situation, uh, <laughs> my daughter, uh, me and the mother were uh, having an argument. Um, my daughter ran into my arms um, at that time. She's seventeen now, but this is when she was two, um, and uh, the mother kept. You know, I guess trying to take the daughter from me, and um, she grabbed the phone, the you know the the you know the hook of the phone, swung the phone at me and hit my daughter. Mm. My God! Uh, knocked my daughter unconscious, and uh, of course I got arrested for that. You oh know, my Lord. so that's a whole nother show. I, so that's a whole, I know that's a whole nother show. <laughs> it's like but this is actually part two. Of right. Last week we had Evan on last week. Let let me. I'm sorry. I hate to cut you guys short, but we we've got to go soon. And there's some more things I needed to say. But Tony, um, what do you want to interject? And then I have some questions from women that you know we can just touch on that real quick, and I'll ask those from you guys. I got to pull it up on my phone. But go some ahead, caller. go ahead, sweetie. Yeah, do we have any callers? I I, I forgot to give you. Guys, the call number three two three seven three one. All the time. But you, you, you I put out the, the number. number out there. Yes, I did. Your people called in. Right. That's okay. That's okay. We gonna keep going. We're good. Okay. We got to wrap it up. I'll take you home for Nick. <laughs> Whatever I need to do, if, if you just give us a few more minutes, it's just because, you know, I know we won't be able just, to come back next me Sunday. And just, just Tony and yeah, then me. And, and, and we're going to wrap it. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say that by the grace of God, I have an excellent relationship with all of my children. Um, it's God. truly God, truly, truly God, because I'm uh, the things I've had to go through. I've done the jail thing. I've had to go through that. I've, I've my situation was a federal situation where you know I was lied upon, and I lost my job, um, credibility. Um, I spent a lot of money, um, well over a hundred thousand dollars. And just in pay where I was already caught up in paying child support but that what the judge did was they took it all the way back to when the baby was born and said okay this is what you got to pay and they put me on a five year probation 
And uh, if, if it had not been for a praying mother and grandmother to, to speak wisdom into me, um, I'd still be sitting there. Hmm. I can honestly say that. I, I was one of those. I'm like, I'm, I just give up. I quit. But my mother said something that was so profound to me. She said, you were there when that baby was born. You named her. So, and you, you were able to spend enough time with her that she knows who you are. She's going to remember and she's going to come running to you. You just be ready when she comes. Hmm. It ain't worth you going to jail and spending the rest of your life in jail over it. And the mother is not willing to adhere to, you know, having a relationship, you having a relationship with your daughter. Um, that situation, I'll never forget it. Me and her mother had been apart for eight years. And I was on the phone with my daughter. And when I told her I got married, her mother passed out. Same thing. Mm. Fell out on the floor. Next thing I knew, I was in federal court. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, they were like, we have a warrant for your arrest. Don't make us come and get you. Can, can mm. I throw something in here? Something we can't really talk about right now because we don't have time. But the spouses, you all's mates, your, your wives or your girlfriends, and the things that they have to go through mm. because the exes the ex. are upset that you all yes. have moved on. <laughs> <laughs> it is you it know that's a is, whole nother shit it, right there it is horrific <laughs> i just i want to say first of all to my three babies the purpose of this show and me talking to my dear friend trish and asking her to do this show and me asking charles to come and asking everyone else here to come is because i love you so much and i want you you to know that this sort of situation i don't want it to be happening when you become adults mm. i know that you are my son you're 12 you just turned 12 i haven't been to four your birthdays but before that you know every birthday we had a huge party for you mm. and i want you to know my two beautiful daughters i adore you as always when i play the king and princess game with you and you dress up as princesses and I, i'm the king and then I'm the servant and I'm everything else in the kingdom <laughs> that you command me to be. Know that your father loves you dearly and that is why I constantly talk about this. And my next message is to fathers out there. I did not know how many of you were suffering from the same thing that I am suffering from hmm. and that is why I reach out I didn't know Ernest was going through this I didn't know Vince was going through this when Jeff Tony I reached out to all of y'all and then y'all told me we have to stop that as men we have to speak out more they said that women get legislature passed because they all stand together yes. and they stand up but men don't do anything about it I know that it is taxing on your health but we together as a unit have to change this for the sake of our children last thing is to Charles I, I salute you my mm -hmm. brother from Nigeria and a graduate of Stanford representing us very well if you need a good attorney Charles Agege the yes. offices of Charles Agege make sure you call him because he is a stand-up guy he believes in God and he's about getting the work done and I'm saying that from experience and y'all know me I talk about what's real in this game uh, uh, that's going on in family court you cannot go in there not represented properly you can't just think the truth is just gonna work right now until men stand up out there and we get some legislature changed in our behalf mm -hmm. my children i love you very much i Good love too. you thank you now you had a cd from a friend of ours named sandra uh, yeah that is an amazing singer and we're going to play that do you have the cd you can uh, you don't have oh, to don't. that's how we're okay. gonna play it we're Thanks, gonna play son. it next sunday we're gonna play it next Thanks, sunday son. and give sandra some love all right but you know what let me just say real quickly i googled men who want to be good fathers and can't i googled all this men who want to be good fathers and can't see their kids because the mother is spiteful you all would be no y'all wouldn't be shocked i was shocked at at all of the things that came up but don't have time to go through it's just just a <laughs> so much stuff so many uh, blogs and articles and things some of these women ask questions like what did you do 
to make these women so angry with you all to uh, respond the way they did? I'm just, these are the questions from the ladies out there. Uh, here's another question. How long did you know your baby mother before you got her pregnant? Here's another question. Did you not have anyone close to you, uh, loved one, uh, but your ex significant other before things went bad do you have a habit choosing crazy as a generational curse issue <laughs> this is another question <laughs> generational curses issues family members uh mom i tried to warn you against her crazy <laughs> you know what uh, do <laughs> and do you have a, a habit of picking crazy women what did people in your family have to say be honest have you spoken any way derogatory to your children about their mom they, this is some of the things they've asked. Have you ever gotten physical with your baby's mother in any abusive no. way, even if you shook her real good? <laughs> okay. So, you, you know, oh, gosh, I wish we had more time. I didn't get a chance to say gopetition.com. Yeah. Gopetition.com. Yes. I have a petition online. Uh, help Evan Lionel be a father to his children by signing this petition. Gopetition.com. Help Evan Lionel be a father to his children. It's a shame that a man has to have a petition to petition the courts who are strangers to be a father to his children. Yes. But I'm willing to do whatever it takes to let the world know that we love our children and we miss them. Yes, guys, thank you so much to the ladies out there that are co-parenting peacefully. I commend you. Keep it up. Continue to let the fathers see their children. Let them have a relationship. That's all I cared about. I didn't take them to court. I just said, look, all I care about is you having a relationship. For the ladies that are not doing that and being the addictive God sees you come on watch out now you want to have a good future so do the things that are right do unto others as others would do unto you as you would have them do unto you be correct in all things be ethical and moral I love y'all thank you so much for watching gospel rhythms I am Trisha Man Grant thank you guys I love you I appreciate you and Emmanuel all is well in Jesus name and we'll see you next week take care And business owners, playwriters, and pastors dance. Many gifts to encourage the body. Consider this a come and kick it and party. We're revolving the way we deliver the gospel. Same message, different method, redefine the possible.